So at the age of 40 years old, what have I learned? I have learned that in this world, life will never be perfect. All you can do is try to make life better. There's always going to be a certain amount of suffering in the world. All you can try to do is make there be less suffering for yourself and for others. What have I learned? I learned that you won't get anything if you don't show up. People will bitch and moan that they want everything free or it's unfair or this or that. But if you don't show up, you don't get anything. Good to see you, Kerry. Love to Wisconsin. Thank you, Kerry, for being a member. Members only chat today, guys. Thank you, Kerry. You have to show up. If you don't show up, you can't get the reward. And I heard someone go on a tyrant today about, about different things they see that they think uh, someone is not being fair. Um, that's their opinion, but they don't show up regularly to their life, to their job, to their responsibilities. So when you don't show up, you don't have say. I, I used to work with a manager. He was a great manager, great man, helped me a lot. But he, he would never show up consistently, but yet he would want to dictate how things were. You can't have it both ways. What have I learned? I've learned there's wisdom and life-saving grace through de-escalation. Conflict has destroyed many people. Unnecessary escalated conflict. You can destroy your life so simple by simply escalating something that didn't need to go that far. The wisdom is in de-escalation. Sometimes you're justified to escalate a situation, but you're foolish and you will destroy your life because of the escalation. Whether it's a physical fight, a gun fight, or anything else. Whether you're a police officer or a civilian. Escalation will destroy your life. Many times people come on my channel you know, we talk about politics sometimes. Of course, they want to know about the Second Amendment, right? What do I do to protect myself? And I always tell people, guys, I've seen more people destroy their life from escalation and de-escalation. I know no one. I know no one that saved their life because they had a loaded gun and used it properly. The opposite. Always tell you guys, you can have a weapon. You can have, and you should protect yourself. That should be the absolute last resort. And you better... Be ready to justify your decisions in a court of law. Use non-lethal means, guys, unless you have no other choice. Saw it today, again, another shooting in Atlanta. Uh, a police officer, guy going to destroy his life. Now, the civilian escalated the conflict, and so did the cop. Takes two to tango. Behind every conflict is two people who escalated the situation. One person could have defused it. There's been times when I've been pulled over by a cop or I've been in a situation and I de-escalate okay, and I encourage my friends de-escalate okay. and whether you're a civilian or you're a cop, you need to de-escalate. Okay, why? You could destroy your life, but not many people do that. And the ripple waves of conflict, not only for your life, for your family, for your friends, for society, they're a stronghold uh, that grips society, the escalation of conflict. So easy. You see it, you know, it, well, I'm going to say it's easy because it's not easy to de-escalate, but you need to, these are lessons learned. Okay, I I've been in fights where I've had the upper hand. I've had someone on the ground. I de-escalated because I said, if I continue to escalate, this is going to end up horrible. I'm either going to seriously hurt this person or they're going to come back one day and they're going to kill me. De-escalation, guys. Protection is not execution. What have I learned in life? 40 years. You have to take care of yourself. 
physically, mentally, emotionally, and your mom can't do it. You know, you may look at your mom and she can't even take care of herself. Your mom may have loved you like no other person on this earth, but she may struggle with food, with relationships. Lack of self-esteem kills more people than terrorism. A lack of self-esteem. What have I learned in 40 years on this earth? A lot of people have dreams, but few people take action. Few people take action. And the dream helps them get through the day, but the lack of action makes them suffer more in life. And like I started this number one lesson I think I learned in 40 years is life is never going to be perfect. And it's something that you got to question God about, but don't question him too long because that's a losing battle itself. You know, there was a whole book in the Bible where Job questioned God and basically a bottom line was, who are you to question? You You can't figure it out, even if you believe or don't believe. It's a useless waste of energy. All you can do is try to make your life less suffering. What have I learned in life? Everyone has a different hand they're dealt. Some people have a gorgeous body, but they're stupid. Some people are very smart, but they got a short penis. Some people are millionaires, but they have a corrupt soul. There's a different set of hands that we're all dealt. We all have our good points and our shortcomings. Don't waste too much energy on that either. Why? Because there's not much you can do about it. Play your hand. Play your hand the right way. Don't play your hand to be a champion. You know, still thinking about reflecting on the last dance, which documented Michael Jordan's run in winning six championship rings and maybe being the best basketball player ever. But the more and more I look at it, the more and more I say, does anyone even care anymore? Like, you know, when I was coming up, Jordan was like, God, no one really cares about Michael Jordan anymore. Your championships are useless as you get older. They don't mean much. No one cares about yesterday's glory. Some people say winning is everything. No one cares about yesterday's glory. Guys, people ain't going to care about Donald Trump in 20 20 years. He's 74. His birthday today. Most people say they're thankful that he's closer to death. Is anyone really? Guys, they'll probably be just like the statues of many people throughout the country right now. They probably throw his statue in the river. No one cares. And there shouldn't be statues of anyone, guys. Because why? Because history and life is constantly rewritten. Okay. And refined and sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. That's an idol of statue. Whether it's of Michael Jordan, Christopher Columbus, or Donald Trump, it's an idol. You don't need that shit. These are some things I've learned in 40 years. Good to see you, Frank. Frank says, I can't take this lockdown in New York. Might be headed to Florida palm trees very soon. Well, Frank, I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you again to all my members. I'm grateful. What I've learned is be grateful for the people that support you. They may not always, and that's part of life. You have to let them do them. And you have to do you. I I saw some mental asshole today. I've, I've let him on my channel a few times. He was bitching and moaning about memberships. This guy barely ever, he doesn't consistently upload to YouTube. He lives off his mother's uh, social security. I said, get the fuck out of here. This guy, you got, you don't, you you know, if you don't show up, don't worry about what other people are doing. Okay. Guys, don't let anyone call the shots in your life, especially if they ain't showing up. They're not there when their company needs them. They're not there when YouTube needs them. They're not there. They're not reliable. The unreliable person is a disgrace to their employee, to their community, and to themselves. Okay, I don't care if they're nice some days and they're assholes the others. I have a couple mental nut jobs on my channel. One day they'd be a nice person, and next day they'd be fucking ranting and raving. Fuck them. Okay. Well, Frank, what I would tell you, and what I would tell anyone thinking about going to Florida, if you're a nomad, don't do it in the height of the summer. Don't do it in July, August, or September. Why? That's the height of hurricane season. High humidity. And if you've never been there, you may struggle to adapt. You know, moving to Florida to me took three years. Visited several times throughout the different years. Now, if you have no other choice and you just want to get out of Dodge, get out of Dodge. Now, they had said that Florida is spiking 
with the coronavirus. They were one of the first states to open early. They fired their data manager that was collecting data. They're not releasing how many people are being hospitalized, only the amount of cases. And they're going to host a, a Republican convention in Jacksonville. So guys, just be careful. Uh, but I understand the need to want to be free. Farmers had an outbreak with the coronavirus to farmer workers. That's what happened. North Central, in the country land of, of Florida, there was an outbreak of the coronavirus. Is that a big scam? I don't know. It may be. It may not be. It may be a seriously thing. I had no idea, to be honest. But always do what you have to do, Frank, and everyone else. You know, the best time to start is now. So look, if you're serious... If you've secured a job or if you're living on, on a certain amount of money that you know you can live in Florida, get the hell, go down there. Keep your commitments light, though. What have I learned in 40 years? Keep your commitments light. Keep your commitments light. Because things change and you have to be able to change with life. And the, when you're stuck in something, that's when you're going to be resentful as hell. Live below your means. I definitely learned that because your father, your manager, your employee, your employer, your friend, everyone will control you when you don't have financial freedom. I mean, to a good extent. Maybe not viciously, but in some way. Carrie, I'm going to Florida in August. Well, August and September are the worst months to be there. However, if you're moving full-time, then it doesn't matter because you're going to be a full-time resident, so that's good. And I still think if I lived in Wisconsin, which I believe you do, I would move there in the height of August. I mean, I don't, I don't want to scare you guys. I've moved or I went to Florida in August, and I've stayed through August, September. The only reason I left last year, I was in Florida in August, was because of Hurricane Doran. Uh, and that ended up not being really anything. So don't fear it. And if you're leaving Wisconsin, even if you have a hurricane, you're better off in Florida. You're doing the right thing. So Carrie and Frank, I would say, look, guys, I just want to let you know those are the worst months, but I also want to let you know you are going to enjoy Florida. Okay. Carrie, what part of Florida are you moving to? Frank, where are you thinking of going to in Florida? What have I learned in four years? Live where you love. I, I do say this, that I, I give to Florida. Even with gorgeous weather right now up north, I don't like being up here to a certain extent. I do still think it's nicer in Florida, uh, in the areas I like, okay? There's different parts of Florida, different cultures, um, but the vibe is different. Coral Springs, okay, that's good. Let me Google Coral Springs. I don't know if that's the one on the east or west coast. I've heard of that many times. Let me see. Oh, that's by my, uh, the one by Miami. Oh, that's a nice neighborhood, I think, Coral Springs. Oh, yeah, Coral Springs, you should be good, uh, Carrie. Yeah, I know where that's at. I haven't spent too much time there, but you should be good there. Congratulations. Frank, East Coast, I agree with that, yeah. Yeah, Coral Springs is, uh, that that's a good place to commute. You're, you'll be able to get a job. It's right outside of Boca Raton. Uh, west of Pompano Beach, just north of Fort Lauderdale. That's a good spot. You should be good there. I don't like weird weather in Wisconsin. I don't blame you. Carrie, you're making the right decision. I know it's scary. I know it's scary to move. And what I'm telling you is you're making the right decision, in my opinion. Better to move than to live your life in a place you hate. Because that's not your best life. Yeah, no, Carrie, that's an excellent area. From my understanding, I, I don't have extensive experience there, so I don't want to lie to you, but I know a couple people that have like headquarters there for work, and from what I've heard, that's a very nice area, very high end, so you should be good there. Uh, Frank, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, Boca, Palm Beach, all nice areas. Uh, Fort Lauderdale has a couple bad areas. Uh, every place has bad areas, I should say that, but you know, those are all good areas. And so, yeah, I think you make a good decision. Um... I think both of you are on the right track. I think both of you will do great. When you're scared in life, and moving is scary. It's very scary. Starting a new business scary, changing jobs. It's understandable, Kerry. 
It's scary, but you're doing the right thing. And, and don't keep people in your life that are making you more scared. Even me, I'm very conscious of, and I, I tr sometimes I have to do a little bit better job. And I'm still trying to refine that. It's not easy. I like to caution people on what to be mindful of, but I don't want them to live in fear or think they can't do it. It's a balance um, as a creator, as, as someone who's sharing, that you want to tell people the ins and outs, but there's no exact science to life. And overall, you want people to feel empowered. At least I do. And sometimes I struggle. Am I being too boisterous in being uh, a negative voice in their head versus a positive? And that's a tough balance. But I think for those who I do connect with on a certain level, I'm just trying to make you well prepared. I think that you can do it. Okay. And I think that if you do things, especially in the right order, and even if they're not in the right order, if they're a little bit sloppy, go for it. Okay. But I, obviously the more research, the more planning, the better things may go. Why, why do I say do it that way? Because guys, you want life to be less suffering. There's no perfect life. Florida is not perfect, but it may be better than Wisconsin. I think it's better than New Jersey. Carrie says she's cutting off toxic people. Well, Carrie, I think you're doing a great job there. I, look, part of, I even cut off my father. I've shared that many times, but I share it with you guys because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pro and a con. I mean, it'll, it'll go with me to the day I go to my grave because I don't desire in one sense to cut people off, especially if they've been a blessing to me. But to go forward, it's almost required. Because there's certain people that they know you're getting ready to change. They know you're getting ready to leave them behind in Wisconsin. And your family in Wisconsin, your friends uh, in New York, uh, Frank, or anyone else, they are going to start to say things or do things to pull you back. Not because they don't think you can do it, because they're scared you're going to leave them behind. And they haven't done the work you have done to put yourself ready to move in August. What have I learned in 40 years that, guys, you have to do what you have to do for you? And if your father, your mother, your friend, or your manager doesn't understand, uh, it's sad, it's hurtful, it's going to suck to lose a resource in your life. But the, the person you can never lose is yourself. Why? Because you're going to be with yourself to the day you die. No one else. When you're in a hospital bed, and I've been there a couple times, the worst place to be. But people, when you're in a hospital bed, even if your mother's next to you and that's a blessing, you're by yourself a little bit and it's scary. But in one sense, it's a reminder. Born alone, die alone to a certain extent. You know, life's an interesting thing, man. I don't have all the answers. I don't, don't overthink life. Here we go. What have I learned in 40 years of life? Don't overthink shit. Even now, like I was getting ready to overthink some philosophy. Don't even do it. Useless energy. And it's just a ball of anxiety, ball of nothing. One time a girl told me that. She goes, Sam, you're overthinking it. And she was right. Guys, when someone points out something, even though sometimes it's, it takes a while for all of us, myself included, to agree, you have to say they were right. You don't go men going their own way. You say, you know what? She was right. I was wrong. To apologize is, is uh, wisdom. When necessary, not over a guilt trip, not because, you know, you want to pander, but if you have evaluated and you have deemed that you're wrong and guys were all wrong, me included, you apologize. Carrie says, uh, she's a little bit nervous. She's cutting people off. Good. I'm trying to plan now. Good. I get a lot of scrutiny from people here about me wanting to move. That's okay. You're going to get it. They're scared you're going to leave them behind. That's where a lot of that energy comes from. You know, change is, is a threat. Change is a threat to the complacent person. And most people are complacent. Most people want to leave, but they don't have the courage to do it. They don't have the will. They don't have the uh, tenacity. They're not showing up to their life. And uh, you got to live your life, Carrie. That's what I tell you. Frank, I want to meet beautiful women and drink coconut juice on the palm trees. Well, Southeast Florida is where you want to go. 
There's no doubt about that. I think you pointed out you made me laugh, and I haven't laughed in a while. I think that's because I haven't been in Southeast Florida. I said that to myself the other day. It's a bad thing when I haven't laughed in a while because I know I want to be very grateful for my time in New Jersey with my mother, and I'm valuing these days because I realize don't take time with special people, obviously your mother, if you have a great mother. I don't want to take it for granted because I know that there's something special there. But I also know that I'm not as happy as I am in Florida here. I'm happier in Florida, I should say, than I am here. Are there better looking people in Southeast Florida? Yes, there are. Why? Because, guys, it's all year round warm weather. So it's a whole different vibe. I mean, there's beautiful people down there. I can guarantee you, Carrie, a lot more beautiful people in Southeast Florida than Wisconsin. Same thing. Well, New York is the same thing. Does that matter if you're married? Oh, well, for me, it just it's, it's makes life a little bit more... I mean, there's some vain, insecure people in Southeast Florida. But it's like that everywhere. But I, I just think it's a, it's a better environment. More inspiring. You know, to get yourself in shape. To sweat. Sweat releases toxins. Like, today was a nice 70 degree Fahrenheit day. No sweat. It was nice. But I didn't sweat. I like to sweat. It's tough, man. You know, in life, like I said, it's not perfect. Florida's not perfect. New Jersey's not perfect. You know, like I always tell you, if I didn't grow up in New Jersey, I probably wouldn't have a career. Florida has, uh, you know, Southeast Florida has jobs. There's jobs in Florida. They're not as high as pay. The environment's better. There's people that'll be failures no matter where they go. I have people that left me comments that they hate New Jersey. They hate the politics. They hate the taxes. Then I have people that comment they hate Florida, they hate the low pay scale. These type of people, they'll be losers, they'll be failures wherever they go. Why? Because they have a poor attitude. And I'm not talking about like poor financially, I'm talking about poor character wise. Attitude is such a huge part of your career and your life. Fuck the college degree. If you don't have a good attitude, if you don't show up every day, guys, you ain't doing shit with your life. I don't care if you have a trade school, if you have a college degree, or if you have a cosmopolitan uh, makeup uh, degree. Guys, you got to have a good attitude, okay? Now you say, Sam, you got a good attitude, you're cursing. Guys, I got a great attitude. I work with people. This is my time to vent, okay? Just I could call probably just about every manager I've worked for, and they would say, at my time, at my job, this is my personal time, I've always displayed a positive attitude. Why? Because that, that's part of what the company needs from you. Whether you're delivering pizza or you're working in construction or IT. Okay. Do you deal with assholes? Of course. Don't let no one mess up your money. Put that right there on the top. You'll mess up your own money when you start to catch attitudes with people. Okay. That's an escalation of conflict. You know, and there's a time and place to point things out. You know, don't embarrass your manager in front of other people. You know, don't embarrass your coworker in front of. Try to, when you can. There's obviously always exceptions. When you can, try to handle things on the side so you're not in to embarrass others. Now, if you can't, then you document so that you have proof you tried to do things the right way, whether it's through an email or whatever. Documentation will save your life or destroy your life. Uh, Carrie says, I know, and I, uh, oh, I, I missed somebody. Uh, Frank said, also, nobody knows what makes you happy but you. That's true. That's an excellent comment, Frank. Yeah, that's an excellent comment, Frank. You know, you're right. And that's part of a self-discovery journey you have to go on in life. That they can't give you in school. Uh, your parents can't give you. You know, you have to do some work in your life and figure out what makes you tick. What gets you inspired. What gets you juiced up. And you got to go after it. You got to show up after it. Uh, that's a very good comment. Carrie, I know I won't let people change my mind. You have to, like, almost like to what Frank said. I think that's an excellent comment that Frank said. 
that carry, especially at this pivotal point in your life where you're getting ready to, to uproot your life. I remember when I was thinking about moving to uh, Florida. Well, I think before that I got a job offer in California, but I didn't want to go to California. I always wanted to go to Florida. But I was very thankful for that job opportunity because it, it showed me that even if I don't get what I want, if I go after something, there'll be another opportunity. I'll never forget that. I was very grateful. And I remember a manager said to me, he's a good guy. He said, Sam, you know, just remember, you're getting ready to uproot your life when you change states. And it was scary when he said that word, uprooting your life. It, scared, it shook me, but it was a good shake. And I said to myself, Sam, are you ready to uproot your life? I wasn't ready yet. When you move, you should liquidate your assets, sell before you consider moving. The first step to moving is consolidation and liquidation. You have to be flexible to move. Do things in order. Don't have two mortgages. Don't buy a house in Florida and still have one in New Jersey or Wisconsin. or Sell, only have one house, guys. For most people, this is my opinion. Uprooting your life is a serious decision, but a necessary, a necessary with a capital N decision. Because to Frank's point, no one knows what makes you tick than you. And Carrie, you know that there's something inside you and, and, and you can change your mind. You know, never forget, guys, like if you decide to do something, move, change, start something, you can always readjust. You know, part of wisdom is trying something, give it an opportunity to succeed. Don't, you know, I, I've struggled with that at times. I've been too quick to bounce back and forth. And as I get older, I'm trying to work on my patience. Not easy. But give it time to take root, the new life. And if you realize that it really isn't healthy, then, then you can readjust. But don't worry about not being able to come back to where you grew up because it won't be the same. Nothing stays the same. What have I learned in 40 years? Time is like a river. You can never touch the same spot twice. I remember telling a coworker, we were debating on, not, on, on whether to take a different position. And I said, look, we can stay here, but no matter what, life's going to change. So sometimes we cling to where we're at just because we don't want things to change, but they're going to change regardless. You can't stop change. So it's better to do proactive change. Go after what you want. Uh, Carrie, laughter is the fruit of life. Yes, I agree. And if you're not laughing, something's wrong with your environment, with your life. And I bet, you know, you guys are bringing up something to me. I'm making me think tonight about my own life. I, you know, I haven't maybe laughed enough in a couple of weeks. It's that, you know, maybe it's the uh, New York state of mind or New Jersey state of mind. I don't know. It's something to be said for that. You know, maybe it's the coronavirus. Maybe it's the civil unrest. That's been a challenging thing for society. A big part of that is, is things that have gotten escalated to the point where it didn't need to. But a lot of contributing factors. A lot of contributing factors. Wealth gap, bad leadership, divisive talk. Guys, I mean, I could be a little bit more polarizing as a YouTuber because I'm not in charge of the masses. If I was in charge of the masses, just like when I'm at work, I don't go to work and start speaking very rough. Okay, Why? Because it's my job to keep the peace. No matter what job you have, a door dasher, Walmart or Wall Street or the president, you have to keep the peace. That's part of your job. Not law and order, but leadership by example. No one responds good to a dictator long term. Dictators, all of them, they fall. Why? Because even though people do need structure, even though people do need direction, people need the space to be themselves. And they need to feel safe and freedom of expression. Whether that's taking a knee or anything else. And if they don't feel that, you're planting a seed for a riot. Carrie, I agree, Frank, with you. Frank, bring up some good points tonight. Carrie, also home of plastic surgery. I agree with you, Sam. Yes, yeah, Southeast Florida has a lot of plastic surgery. There's no doubt about it. That's a great point. 
Um, when I was down there, I remember I was on, I was listening to the radio station, and the radio stations are better down there in my opinion. Uh, like that Latin vibe, man. And it, the, a commercial came on. It was for uh, vaginal correctional surge, surgery. I said, what the hell is vaginal correctional surgery? Now, at that time, I had a viewer from upstate New York. She said, Sam, I'm in the uh, pampering the puss game. She had uh, 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 a female um, shop in upstate New York about pampering the puss. You know, pumping up essential oils in, her, in the puss. And I guess vaginal correction surgeries, they shoot lasers in the puss to tighten it up. I never heard of that. But I've also was never at Boca Raton. <laughs> Guys, Boca Raton got a lot of plastic surgery. Guys, if I needed plastic surgery, would I get it? If it was a major deformity, yes. Yes, I would. Nothing wrong with it if you, you know. But it's not going to change who you are. It's only going to enhance. Okay. And, you know, you should treat plastic surgery like spackle. Don't overdo it. And, you know, when in doubt, don't do it. You know, plastic surgery is like long-term financial commitments. When in doubt, don't do it. Because, guys, if they don't like you with a flat chest, they ain't going to like you with some double Ds. If they don't like you with a three-inch penis, they ain't going to like you with a 15-inch. Why? Guys, there's certain people that are never going to like you. That's what I've learned in four years. You could be in the best shape of your life. You could, you could wear the best outfit. Stop shopping for fancy outfits. If they don't like you, and what you like to wear, they ain't never going to like you. Never. I learned that. I went through a phase of my life where I took serious thought into certain outfits and how they would be perceived. There's a time and in, in, in place for that in your life. But guys, let me tell you something right now. I'm never going to wear underwear again. Now, I, I'll get dressed up if I need to, but I doubt I, I, I want to. And if I do, it's just going to be for myself. Now, I know that disappoints a lot of people. Some people want to see it dressed up there only because of what it does for them. It makes them feel, like, excited. <laughs> but, guys, you're, you're in charge. Like Frank was saying, you're in charge of your own happiness. Don't start, you know, like, I'm on YouTube. Supposedly, I'm an entertainer. That's why I got to file, like, uh, my, my taxes on. I'm an entertainer. I'm a stripper. But don't entertain people to the point that you don't love yourself. I mean, guys, I can rant and rave. I can figure out like outrageous things to do. There's sometimes I say, I'm not going to do that just to be outrageous. Don't make sense. I know it'll get more views. It'll get more views if I, in one sense, if I just do certain like hot political topic issues. When the coronavirus hit and I was doing, po guys, videos were going more uh, viral. But if I'm not into it, I'm not into it. Okay. Why? That, that's why you live below your means. These are the lessons I learned in four years. When you live below your means, you don't have to chase as hard after the money. You always have to go after something. You always have to show up okay. and get your money. If you show up every day to YouTube and there's some psychopath that only uploads videos when they like to, don't worry about what they think about your channel. okay? Because they don't know how to show up to shit. Okay? I know a girl on YouTube. She was in a mental hospital. I never, I never shamed her for that. She abandoned her son, okay? Never shamed her for that. She brought up George Floyd's past history, and she never mentioned her history. Uh, they ain't no conspiracy theory. Why don't you share about your life? She didn't do that. And she's, she's seducing a lot of ugly-ass guys on YouTube. Because they think, oh, here's this hot girl living in her car. I'm going to follow her. They're going to follow Satan, okay? That pussy's a trap, man. She abandoned her own son. She's going to abandon you. She don't know nothing about no, no uh, deep, dark conspiracy. She don't even know how to be a good person. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Guys, bad people, bad people. Okay? And again, now I can speak a little bit boisterous. This is a personal a viewpoint. We're not, you know, this is a personal. But what I'm trying to tell you, in your mind, you have to evaluate. Look, do I got to take this serious? How this person looks at life? Die the comment. From one of my viewers, he said he broke up with his girl recently over politics. It was stupid. I said, that's not stupid in my mind. I said, that's, that's very serious. If you love Trump and they hate Trump, can you get along? I don't think so. You look at life two, two different ways. That, I think that's a very real reason why to, why to break up. Average relationship only lasts three years. Average marriage only lasts 10. Even if you both love Trump, you're probably going to get divorced. 
Trump got divorced three times. Or two times, one of them, don't matter. Let's continue. Frank, it costs nothing to be happy. Well, I don't know, man. I, I, I lovingly disagree. Why? Because happiness, you got to really fight for your joy. And happiness doesn't last. I think Sarah told me that one time. Happiness is an emotion. It doesn't stay with us. Like the first lesson that I opened up this live feed was life will never be perfect. There will always be suffering. All you can do is live your best life. A part of your best life is putting yourself in an environment physically, emotionally, mentally, every way, self-care, that you're happier, hopefully more than you're sad. But you're going to be sad. Even when you live in Florida, even if you're retired early, there's going to be sad days. So what do you do? You just, you got to keep self-care through the suffering. Self-care through the suffering. Don't self-medicate self-care. And, you know, happiness is a choice through self-care. Uh, that's the best thing I've come up with. Uh, 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 Carrie says, I agree, Frank. Frank, I'd rather be broke under a palm tree <laughs> than rich with bills in New York City. I can understand that. There's definitely a time to take less, um, depending on your individual circumstance. I, I would agree with that. You know, look, money is money is important. It matters. And you should measure it, but it shouldn't always be everything. You have to make decisions. Okay. And sometimes you take less to be in a better environment. That's true. Sometimes you walk away from inheritance because the person in your family who holds it over your head, you don't want them in your life. I've done that. So, yeah, money isn't everything. Uh, it's something, but it's not everything. That's true. Uh, uh, Carrie says, good point, Frank. Carrie. I plan to do that, Carrie. Get rid of a lot of stuff and a lot of uh, nils. Uh, bills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, definitely live simple. That's one of, my, one of my top things that I've learned in 40 years. The simpler you live, the less bills and the more income or vice versa. You know, got to have income because you're always going to have expenses. You can get rid of bills, but you always have expenses. What are some expenses you never get rid of? Insurances, food, gas. And you got to enjoy life a little bit. I, I struggle with that sometimes. One of the areas I struggle with is I'm a cheap bastard at this point in my life. And I have to be conscious that you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor a little bit too. Okay. And like I said, the people who don't want you to enjoy the fruits of your labor, they're the people that don't show up consecutively to a job. They can't even show up consecutively to YouTube. So guys, membership the shit out of your channel. Okay. Because if you can't make a video every day, you have no right to tell someone else what to do. And there's some people that do that. There's some people that do that. They have no right. Frank Breeze, $5 super chat. Well, brother, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate your words of encouragement, your wise, encouraging words to Kerry. I appreciate both you and Kerry. I appreciate all my members, and I thank you. And I thank you all my heart. Go after what you want. Build up your self-esteem. Empower yourself. Thank you. Let's take a hydration break. Continue to read live comments, man. Love to you. Let them laugh at you. You know, one of my viewers, Marin, I opened up the live feed yesterday. I was talking about big chicks at the Jersey Shore. Marin struggles with weight. I've struggled with weight at times. And she goes, Sam, I, you know, what you said about big chicks really hurt me a little bit because, um, you know, I struggle with weight and it didn't make me feel like going forward. And I said, I can understand that. But in my mind, if she kept listening, I also said, let people laugh at you. If you're big, whatever. Guys, people always laugh at you. When I was obese, there was people laughing at me when I went for a walk. You know, when I got skinny, people said I got too skinny. No matter what you do in life, guys, there's going to be people that aren't happy with your decisions. Even now, there's people that comment, they don't like this about me, they don't like that. And that, that never stops. You have to build up your self-esteem. That's a very personal thing. Now, Marin recognized that. She said, I have to meditate on this. I have to work through this. That's right. When you suffer, you need to do self-care. Words that people have, and I have to be conscious of that. It's a tough thing. I mean, I need to honestly share. This is a creative space for me. Okay, Again, again this is different than showing up at an office. It's a creative space. So I want to be creative and let some of my free-flowing thoughts go. However, I understand that thoughts and words have power. But you have to understand the environment. Okay. 
I'm not addressing the country in the state of the union. I would have to be more careful on a, on connecting with the masses. On my YouTube channel, I'm trying to connect with people that are very similar in my mind. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to connect with the masses. A lot of my channels are about living in a car. I mean, that's less than 1% of society. A lot of my channels are about not having kids, staying single. Very small percentage of society. But you're always better. Here's a lesson that I've learned in 40 years, and I struggle with this at times. We all do. When in doubt, be yourself. Now, being yourself has consequences. It does. Why? Because the more people you can appeal to, the further you go in life through connections and relationships. Part of sales, and in a capitalist society, we're all in sales. Every time you go on a job interview, you're, you're selling yourself. Every time you greet someone in a restaurant, you're selling yourself. Every time you door dash, you're selling yourself to the restaurant, to the customer. Every time you interact with someone, you're a salesman or a saleswoman. Every time you go on a date, it's a sales job. A CEO is nothing more than a glorified salesman or saleswoman. We're all, we're all in the sales game. I got a bird right now on my, oh, that's cute. A bird just jumped on top of my uh, hood on my car. There's a You have to play the game a little bit. This is what I learned in 40 years. You got to play the game a little bit. Okay. Can't be a rebel all your life. And you can't say society's so unjust that you're just going to buck all of society. Play the game. Got to play it. The- Guys, there's a game in every system. Whether you call it capitalism, socialism, dictatorship, communism. There's a game in every system. You have to play the game a little bit. Okay? If you want to reform the game, reform it. Okay. The game of life, guys. We're all losers. Okay, none of us are getting out of here alive. The money bag can't save any of us from death. I mean, we can do certain things to enhance our life, but guys, you know, we're all on the same path in one sense of speaking. Uh, Frank said, if you could be rich and unhappy or poor and happy, would would you choose? I would like to be somewhere in the middle, you know. I, I I wouldn't want to choose either one of them because I don't like either one of them. Uh, I don't obviously if you have money but you're unhappy. I would tend to want to have money and be unhappy because I figure happiness is an emotion that will come and go. Even if you're poor, you're not. I know poor people. I know rich people. Guys, even if you're unhappy, no one's ever happy 100 percent of the time. No one. Whether you're poor or rich, no one's always happy. So if you know you're not always going to be happy, you might as well have money. However, I do not recommend and I do not preach and I do not practice that you do harmful, illegal, or manipulative things to get money. Okay. You can get money through showing up. Most people won't show up. Whether it's a real job, YouTube, whatever. Most no, no, most people, guys, I'm not that talented in, in some ways. Some ways I have talents, but some ways oh, oh, I have tenacity. I just show up. And I watch people self-eliminate themselves through just being absent. And that's why I never listen to their advice. Because you got to show up to have a piece of, uh, a piece of advice. You, you, you got you know, you to be there. But you need money for a, a level of dignity in the world. You're never going to starve to death in America. I got family members that have never worked. They're on food stamps. They're on subsidized housing. Are they happy? No. So, now, they, they, they have the opportunity to live a different life, but they're not happy no matter what. There's some people, rich and poor, they're not happy no matter what. Nasty people, I don't understand why. Well, I would say, I think the number one reason most people aren't happy is they're not willing to do the self-journey. 40 years of my life, I've seen rich, poor, all walks of life, all religions, and one common denominator is when someone's unwilling to work on their own life, and just dis- and they and they distract themselves with unhealthy relationships, uh, pets and projects. Uh, they're the cause of their own misery. In many instances, some of it is a mental mechanism that doesn't change. But even that, guys, you can't enhance your mental health. Okay. Now look, everyone's got different things, but you can you can make things a little bit better through a comprehensive, healthy way. Okay. But you know. It, that's not for me to determine. 
Never try to fix someone's life. What have I learned in 40 years? Don't try to fix other people's life. I volunteered at soup kitchens. I've worked with the destitute. Uh, had family members strung out on drugs. And what I've learned is you ain't going to change anyone. Nope. Don't matter if you're Mother Teresa or Donald Trump. Don't matter. No matter what your mind says, you ain't going to change anyone. You got to give people the space to be them. And if they show you that they don't want to change, you got you to move on with your life. That's a powerful lesson. Not, not, not too many people will do that one. It's not easy. Uh, Carrie says he chooses happiness. Carrie, Frank, Carrie, what's your email? I will pick you up on the way down. Carrie, yep, that's crazy. Vagad's, yeah, I'm not mad at that. Vag, uh, vaginal uh, rejuvenation surgery. That's what I call it, yeah. I'm not mad at that, guys. Look, most people are insecure about their physical looks, whether they're female or male. Male, to, to be honest with you, males are more insecure in many instances than females in some ways. But you know, look, guys, the most beautiful women I knew, and I've been blessed to know a few, they were actually the most insecure. Why? I don't know. Maybe because they know that beauty is fading for all of us. You know, I look at myself get older in these videos. Uh, my weight fluctuate, and some of the uh, transgender, the gay people, they get upset if I'm not looking hot because they just look at me like they want to get with me. But what I tell you guys is, look, beauty fades for all of us. Take care of your health. When I say take care of your health, I have nothing to do with vanity. Vanity is a plus. If you could look better, that's a plus. Take care of your health. Who gives a fuck who wants to get with you? They ain't always going to want to get with you. Don't matter if it's Caitlyn Jenner or Kim Kardashian. They ain't always going to want to get with you. Okay. And don't let someone else with bad mental health comment on your physical well-being, on how you look. Give a fuck what they say. Let's continue. Carrie, they can a lot down there. Carrie, I go commando a lot. Well, now you're on the right track. <laughs> Frank Breeze, five dollars super chat. Thank you again, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Celebrate. All right, guys, walk off on a high note. Why? Because the longer you stretch out the message, the worse it gets. Okay, say what you need to say. Pause. Take breaks. Take your time. But when the conversation is over. End it and move on. Don't drag it out. Peace and love. Thank you to all my members. See you guys in the next video. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Frank. Keep pushing forward. Head down to Florida. Do it responsibly. God bless you.